This short video explains what the age standardized mortality rate is, why it's important, but also how it can easily mislead people. We need the age standardized mortality rate when we seek to determine if a particular treatment, for example a vaccine, a drug or an operation, is effective in saving lives. So suppose we've got data on a sample of people who've had the treatment and some of whom have not had the treatment and we observe how many died within a specified time interval. So here, 40 out of the 1,000 people treated died, but only 20 out of the 1,000 people who were not treated died. And that suggests that the treatment is killing more people than it saves. So the mortality rate amongst the treated is twice that amongst the not treated. But this mortality rate doesn't tell the full story. More often than not, the data will be from an observational study rather than from a randomised controlled trial. And this means that there may have been proportionally many more older people treated than not treated. And incidentally, we get these and similar confounding problems in randomised controlled trials also. So we need to adjust the mortality rates in each of the two groups to take account of different age distributions in the groups. In fact, here's a real example using COVID case data from Public Health England in June 2021. The relevant population samples here were those who in June 2021 were classified as COVID cases. Now, although twice as many of the COVID cases were unvaccinated, there were more deaths in the vaccinated group, meaning that the overall mortality rate was over three times higher for those who were vaccinated. Many concluded from this that the vaccine was neither safe nor effective. But things look very different when we dig into the data. In the 50 plus age category, which is where most deaths occur, we see that many more were vaccinated than unvaccinated. And the mortality rate is actually four times higher in the unvaccinated group. But even in the under 50 age category, where there were very few deaths and most people were unvaccinated, the mortality rate is again slightly higher in the unvaccinated group. So although in the aggregate data, the mortality rate among the vaccinated was over three times higher than the vaccinated, in each of the subcategories, the mortality rate was higher in the unvaccinated. Now people find this hard to believe and they think there's some trickery going on, but you can actually see that the numbers add up. That plus that is that, that plus that is that, that plus that is that, and that plus that is that. It's all explained by the fact that most of the older age group are vaccinated, whereas most of the younger group are not. And this is an example of Simpson's paradox. And there are other short videos I've made about this on the channel, which I encourage you to watch. So if you want a more appropriate aggregated mortality rate, we have to use a weighted average of the different age category mortality rates. And that's what the age standardized mortality rate is. In the example we just looked at, any weighted average will conclude that mortality rate for unvaccinated is higher than vaccinated. So let's use a 50-50 weighting for the two age groups. Then in the vaccinated, we multiply the 0.5 that's the 50% weighting with the mortality rate of 10 in the under 50 group. Add it to 0.5 times the mortality rate in the 50 plus group to get 459. We do the same in the unvaccinated group and we get 1,952. So the weighted average is 4.3 times higher in the unvaccinated. But the results are quite sensitive to the particular weights. And that's why we're supposed to use weights based on standard population size for that age category. And in England, approximately 64% of the population is less than 50, and so approximately 36% is 50 plus. And using those weightings, i.e. 0.64 and 0.36, we get the calculation for the vaccinated to be equal to age standardized mortality rate of 333, and for the unvaccinated, 1,409. So note that although the unvaccinated are still much higher, both of the rates are much lower with this particular weighting. So it's quite sensitive to the weighting. So the weightings are critical. Of course, in general, we may have more than two age categories for which data are collected. For example, they might be less than 10, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, etc. 
So suppose in general that there are n age categories, a1, which might be less than 10, a2, 10 to 19, etc., up to a n, which might be greater than 90. And let's suppose that the respective population proportions for these are p1, p2, up to pn, so those are sum to 1s. Then the age standardized mortality rate of number of deaths per 100k is simply, again, that weighted formula where TI is the number of people of category A in the data set, and DI is the number of those of category AI in the data set who died. But while the age standardized mortality rate is clearly an improvement on the unweighted aggregate, it can produce very misleading and biased results when the data set contains small numbers of deaths for some of the age categories. So consider this hypothetical example. We have two age categories, age less than 70 and 70 plus. Now in the age less than 70 category, the sample sizes are small and there are very few deaths. The fact that there's just one more death in the untreated means that we get a doubling of the mortality rate. In the 70 plus category, there are many more people and many more deaths. Five times as many deaths in the treated than the untreated. So in the simple aggregated figures, the mortality rate is very similar to the 70 plus category because almost all of the people were 70 plus. So in the aggregate, the treated the mortality rate is again almost five times that of the untreated. But things are very different when we use the age standardized mortality rate. Assuming a 90-10 weighting for the respective age proportions, i.e. 90% are less than 70 and 10% are 70 plus, then we get an age standardized mortality rate of 1,990 for those treated, because it's going to be 0.9 times that plus 0.1 times that. And in the untreated, it's 0.9 times that plus 0.1 times that, which is 2000. So in this case, the untreated mortality rate is higher than the treated. It's switched round. Now, this is not just counterintuitive, but it's clearly wrong as an overall conclusion about the efficacy of treatment in this case. The treatment clearly kills more than it says in the over 70s, while there's insufficient data to draw any strong conclusions for those under 70, but that information is lost in the age standardized mortality rate. While that hypothetical example seems extreme, this one is both real and potentially even more alarming. This is the actual cumulative Office for National Statistics data on non-COVID related deaths among the fully vaccinated and the unvaccinated in England up until July 2021. So up until that point, there were just over 23 million fully vaccinated by then, and just under 10 million, excluding children, who were completely unvaccinated. The mortality rate among the fully vaccinated is almost six times that of the unvaccinated. Yet the Office of National Statistics only reported the age standardized mortality rate. And for this, the unvaccinated is almost twice that fully vaccinated. So completely different results. But there's a problem here. For a start, the Office of National Statistics doesn't provide the raw data for the different age categories. And so we've got no way to check the validity of these figures. But we do know the proportions used are based on population estimates of an old census, namely the 2011 census. So there are already problems with that, even if we had the raw data. Now, because the fully vaccinated still contain a disproportionately large number of older people and the unvaccinated a disproportionately large number of younger people, it is logical that the age adjusted mortality rates will decrease and increase respectively. However, the big problem here is that there are relatively few deaths overall in the unvaccinated. And it's likely that the massive changes in the age standardized mortality rate are due to exaggerating the effect of the mortality rate in age categories where there are few deaths. <laughs>